Just quiet down. Um, we're going to start off by going over a couple of problems from the contest that we gave on Friday. So, um, is there any problem in particular that you guys want to see? Oh, we should look at problem G. Problem G. Problem G. Any of the uh, easier problems? Uh, J. Alright, fine. So, um, essentially, if you haven't read this example, it's basically asking you, um, if you have, like, you're sitting right in front of the video, so, the oh, like, hasn't you're sitting right in front of the video. So, I'll tell you when you get out of it. Is that okay? Do you all remember this a little problem, bit more. or do you want to still see what it is? Rem see what it is. Okay. All right, so, essentially, we have an array of, um, length 5 times 10 to the fifth, and uh, the values are up to 10 to the fifth. And so um, you have to answer two types of queries, and the first type of query is to increase all values in the array between a given L and R by some integer that's not negative, so x. And the second type is to um, find the value of this function, which it is called up is the um, maximum like distance between two indices that take on the value y. So for instance, if I have an array like 1, 2, 5, 6, 2, I don't know. Then if I do like this function on this array with y equal to 2, this would be like 4 minus 1, which is 3. So update all values between like a range <coughs> by adding some integer and then finding the maximum distance. And you have 5 times 10 to the 4th of these quarters. So, it's kind of awkward. You can erase the word. Alright. Does everyone get the problem right now? Any of you need me to like clarify anything? Um, I'm just going to erase this. So. So, um, let's see. I guess the naive way, or the easy way to think about it, is to do both of these by iterating through the entire array. And this should be uh, pretty obvious, right? So, for the first type of query, I go through the whole array. I check if a given element is between L and R, and if it is, I increase X. So, that's L of N. So, way too slow for our 10 second time to do it. So the way you speed this up is using square decomposition. Um, how many of you guys have actually heard of that? Just can I get a show of hands? <laughs> okay. um, I don't want to like go into that because that'll be a future lecture. But for the people who didn't solve it, we've got them. Okay. Um, okay, I'll go over it briefly. So I guess the intuition is to, if you have a really long array, let's just give, give this an analogy. So one. You can type. Awkward <laughs> typing. So if I have this really, um, pretend this array is really long. 
Um, so it's like 10 to the fifth elements. I want to split this array up into square root and uh, buckets is what they call it, or essentially square root and segments. So um, for this array, it's about nine elements. So I want to split it up into three, uh, uh, like groups of three. And each of these buckets would store like some property like of the numbers inside the bucket. So, so for instance, um, so this bucket might store like some property of the numbers 1, 5, 2. This one some properties of like 3 and 1. And then this one some properties of 9, 2, 4. And so <coughs> this tends to speed up our algorithm from an O of n1 to an O of square root n1. So um, in the case of this problem, we want to be able to So we have an array of 5 times 10 to the fifth. Um, if we split that up into buckets like this. All right, so implementing it's kind of tricky. But the basic idea is to sort these elements um, by their values. So we have 5 times 10 to the fifth. We sort these elements. So um, let's just. What we get after sorting. Um, is that, is that yes. so. And um, what we want to do is we want for every bucket we want to like store a map to see uh, if a certain element exists in that bucket. So this map might have like. Um, or a set, I guess you could think of it as a set. Uh, the set might have the elements like one, two, one and two. This bucket might have the elements four, five, nine, 10, 11, 15, right? And so we can check if an element is in a given bucket in constant time, because that's how a hash, hash set works, right? So, and in that sense, when we want to do the queries, uh, we can iterate through the buckets this way, and then find the first bucket that has the value y. So say my query, my type 2 query is like 4. So I go through the buckets one at a time, and I find this bucket that has 4, right? And then after that, I like once I know the bucket has 4, I go through each of the elements inside the bucket till I find 4. And so I can, there like a total of square root n buckets, and each bucket has a length of square root n. So this becomes O of square root n to do the um, second query. So I find this index with n. And then, um, <coughs> okay, um, and then I do the same thing on the, from the other side. So if I had like a lot of fours, for instance, uh, it would overflow into another bucket. And so I go from the other side, and I find the, the last place that occurs, and then I subtract the two and output it. And that's, that's the second query. <coughs> um, does that kind of make sense to everyone? I have no idea what you said. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Um, yeah, I probably should have just went from what to what? So it went from O of n to O of square n, essentially, because we split it into square n buckets. Um, for every type 2 query, we only go through all of the buckets once, and we only go through at most one of the buckets. So, there are square root n buckets, and each bucket has square root n elements. So you can think of it as like two times square root n. Yeah. So uh, you're you're outputting the difference between the indexes of the last place stickers and the first yeah. place. That's that's the task. So why would that take um, over like ten to the power of ten computations? You said that that would be horribly so, inefficient. Yeah. So um, we have an array of five times ten to the fifth, that many elements. Yes. And there are five times ten to the fourth queries. So if each query is five times ten to the fifth. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> it's pretty large. Um, and then, so I guess for those who are still following along, um, the first query is essentially kind of the same concept. We just um, we go through like we find the minimum and the maximum boundary that uh, that that contains that's like between L and R. Yeah. Okay. So say L and R are like. 4 and 10, then we can like find this boundary, like these two 
boundaries and spirit and time with kind of the same technique going through the buckets. And then um, we can also update these by, uh, by storing like a separate like array for each bucket. And so for this bucket, we don't actually go through all the elements and add them. We instead store like a counter like add of like this bucket. I know, but if you map it, because the first bucket is in because I'll keep it. So add a one, you can't the value of the bucket. And then for the overflow, we can just iterate through that. But there will maybe be others. Um, yeah, like, don't worry if you didn't follow that, because we will be going through square and decomposition operators. Well, we do that, you still have to reflect that. But if you're going to use a map to check. Uh, so we have a lot to it. Whatever you do in the first query, I'll update that also. Or somehow involve that. Right, uh, so how would you do that? Ask me about that after. <laughs> like, we actually have to get out to lunch. Okay. Right, so, um, does anyone have any, like, easier problems I can go over? Maybe, like, help me. Yeah. Um, it's making a map. It might take much time to raise them. You don't have to do it. Because the whole problem is having so many quarters. Yeah. So if you can do something that's helpful for every quarter, that's a good Just part one. Nobody's supporting me. Part two is like complicated. All right, anyway. Let's go. Anyway, let's move on to all the things. So, I don't know. We do it quickly. In essence, uh, the problem of eating find is like at its most basic state, you're given an array of elements. I'm sorry, are people talking? It's very distracting in the person picture. So you're given an array of elements. Um, I'm just going to index it. <coughs> That's the index. These are the actual like values. Let's just start them off with the same as the so, um, the task of union find kind of is to kind of uh, well, it's to union and find. <laughs> That's why it's union find. Um, and so union is to combine like two groups together. So if you think of each separate distinct value as one group, um, union would be kind of to combine like uh, these two groups. So say if I want to union two to one. I would change all instances of two to one. And so maybe again if I union like three and four, change all the instances of three <coughs> to four. Now the tricky part is if I want to union four and one, like I'd have to change all instances in the array of four to one. So it's kind of like each value is a separate group, and we want to combine the groups together. Right? Okay, so union find. When would I want to do this? Um, so there are a number of applications. I mean, I've heard of union before, of course, but this doesn't feel like union. This feels like replacement. Why is it union union energy? So basically, like each distinct value is a separate group. So zero is a group, one is a group, two is a group, three is a group. So when you union two groups together, basically it replaces one of the values. Yes. Yeah. So the fine. two groups come together. Okay. And find is essentially given an index. Find the group is in. So that's just looking it out. So this is group one. This is group zero. Right. And so, um, I'm going to skip over connectivity for now. Uh, I don't have that much time. But essentially, um, essentially, the idea of the, the um, array I just, uh, I just put on the board, um, doing union would take all of n times, right? Because when I go through the entire array, I have to check if like, a certain element is equal to the group I want to union to, or a union from, and then change that element. So I have to go through the entire array. But um, to find is just looking up the value in the array. So that's all one. And so it um, turns out that's not the most optimal solution. And so um, if we represent that each of the groups in the array as a tree, we could do some interesting things. So let's go to the example in figure three. So our array is five. One, one. So these are all the group. 
So I have, four, uh, I have three groups. The first four elements are in one group. The next four elements are in another group. And the last two elements are in the third group. And so the graph you see in figure two um, is kind of a representation of that. We see like three separate graphs. And so that kind of uh, illustrates like, so if I have one, So that's like one group with the root of one. And so right here. So um, I won't draw the last one, but the point is uh, each of these groups can be identified by the root vertex. So um, does that kind of make sense? <coughs> so is yeah. everything in one of those graphs, do they all have the same value? Um, these are like, yes. think of these as index, index numbers. So they're all the same value? Yeah, they're all yeah. like, yeah. Right. And like, in like, figure yeah. three, there's like different Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I'll talk about that one. Okay. So, um, the reason why they're different numbers than the ones I wrote here in figure three is because when we want to union, what, um, <coughs> what essentially figure three is representing is we might have changed the value at index three might have been a separate group, it might have been like five, and maybe we later call it union two and three. And so to represent it as a graph, like we would just change this value to two. And that would basically symbolize that So let's start them off at So um, we're representing the array a little differently now. So each of these are separate groups. Say I wanted to union, like, so we have element zero in a group, element one in a group, element two in a group, and so on. Okay. And so to answer your question, if I want to union two to one, I would just add a pointer, right, like that. So now these two are in one component with the vertex I want. And so, to reflect that in an array, we all, like, these values only store the, um, the parent. So, if I want to union these two, I just change this to one. Right. The tricky part with this figure is that if I want to union, like, three to two, um, it's going to take some time to go up the tree, like, go to 2 and then go to 1 to find the root to directly connect it. You see, that's going to be up to all that. So instead, what the diagram is showing is if 3 wants to be union to 2, we just change the pointer to 2, like this. And so they're all in one group. So that's a very quick way to union them together. But the problem with that is when I want to later find out what group 3 is in, I have to go up the tree again. That's going to take up to all that time. So there's kind of the dilemma there, right? I can just update the pointer, but to find what, like, what the root vertex is of a given node, I have to go up the tree. Yeah. So you're saying that either find is O of n or union is O of n, right? That's what it seemed like right now, yeah. Okay. So the two approaches I've presented are yeah, basically that. So, um, so if we build off on this like, graph approach, um, we can actually speed up those. Goal of this is to say, like, uh, if you land at one, two, or three, all the value you're going to get is one. Like, yeah, exactly. So if you query on any of these three nodes, we want the value to be one the root vertex. Okay. So um, there are two optimizations we can do that kind of make this faster. Um, one is. <coughs> One is when we union, we want to union the smaller group to the larger group. Right. So we want, um, so um, that one we can cut the uh, size of the tree down to log n. 
But I guess the much more important optimization, what I'm going to go over in much more detail, is the path compression. So essentially, um, as I said earlier, when we want to find the group of three, we've got to go up the tree, up to two, and to one. But um, the thing is, when we're done finding that, say we want to say like find three, it's going to go up to two, then to one. But that's kind of that's kind of a recursive step, right? So at the end of finding it all, we can <coughs> update this pointer just to go straight to one. And the thing is, it's not just with three. So say I had a tree like one, two, three, four. So it's like really long, essentially. So when I want to find four, I go up the tree, and then when I'm done going up the tree, I can change all of the pointers. <laughs> okay. And so, um, so yeah, that next time we want to uh, find a group of like say two, it goes directly to one. So that's constant time. Okay. Does everyone kind of understand that? Okay. Um, all right. So to implement this, uh, it's actually fairly like it's very short. The pseudocode is in section six. Um, the complexity of it is a bit more complicated. So, uh, for all intents and purposes, so it's basically, it is a function of n. It's like, it's called the inverse Ackerman function of n. But um, for all intents and purposes, it's pretty much always less than five. So I think there's like, if, you, if n is like the number of atoms in the universe, it's less than like 10 or something. So for your computer program, like, you can treat it to be constant. Okay, so essentially, um, so that's union find, and it can do both union and find in very, very quickly, and basically comes to pass. So, oh. Questions so far? Yeah. What are, can you give like, maybe like an example of what, like a programming problem that would use this? So yeah, we were going to um, combine this with another lecture, but uh, so um, a very standard algorithm is finding the minimum spanner tree. Uh, how many of you guys know what that is, actually? Well, all right, so say I have a graph. I'm just going to draw the graph. And so basically the goal of finding the minimum standard tree Folks is to find the tree in like that make up, that are made up of these edges such that all of the nodes are connected with the minimum. <coughs> so I guess um, go ahead and it'll be like this edge, this edge, this edge, and this edge. And again, a tree is basically acyclic. Like, there's no cycles. So we want to include all of the nodes in the tree, and we want to minimize the minimum so, I guess that's uh, um, so I won't go into the specifics, but there are two ways to do this. Most commonly it's like Prim's algorithm and Chris Gal's algorithm. And Chris Gal's algorithm is essentially just gonna use it. So the idea, kind of the intuition behind it, is that I can keep on unioning like the so if you treat each node of the graph as like one one, I keep on unioning the nodes together to eventually form the minimum tree. Right. So the implementations of, is worth talking about in another lecture, but that's one instance. So it appears a lot in like ad hoc problems. Um, so essentially problems that you know aren't one standard algorithm, like union finds kind of a like one step in solving these problems. So. Questions?